Man commits suicide in his place frozen asleep for 150 years. Welcome back to Popcorn Time Movie Digest. Today I will show you a science fiction psychological thriller film from 2001, titled Vanilla Sky, spoilers ahead watch out and take care. David, a 33-year-old tycoon who acquired a publishing empire when his parents were killed in a car crash. His condominium resembles the sharper image catalog. David drives to work, he discovers the roads of New York unusually abandoned at a busy time. With developing anxiety, he drives to Times Square and tracks down the whole city deserted. He then awakens in his room once again to realize he's only been having a vivid dream. David is in a jail cell depicting a dream to Dr. Curtis McCabe, a psychologist who has been assigned to him. David has been accused of a murder he cannot remember, and he wears a prosthetic strange pale mask. He and Dr. McCabe discuss the events that prompted his eventual detainment. David tells his life story to court psychologist Dr. Curtis McCabe. Following the death of David's father, he was given 51% ownership of his father's publishing company. The remainder of the company is possessed by a board of directors that David disparagingly calls the Seven Dwarfs. All of them hate David as they assume that one of them would become the eventual owners of the company after David's father died. David leaves the duties of the publisher to his father's trusted associates while living like a playboy in Manhattan. David carries on with a rock star way of life that includes numerous ladies. One of them is Juliana. Juliana and David are friends who sometimes sleep together. However, David considers this relationship no more casually than it is, Juliana has developed stronger feelings for David. She loves him but doesn't tell him that. She expects and assumes that he too loves her back. In one sleepover, David has a dream about being all alone at Times Square. He wakes up and leaves for work. Juliana, however, misses an audition to be with David. David throws a party on his 33rd birthday. At the party, we are quickly shown a bunch of people that David hardly cares about. David did not even care to invite Juliana, she shows up anyway. Upstairs, David receives a naked greeting from Juliana. David doesn't like the fact that she has shown up without being invited. Juliana is hurt that she wasn't invited. David leaves her and heads down. David's best friend, Brian shows up at the party with Sophia whom he just met at the library. Almost instantly, David and Sophia are interested in one another and flirt lightly with each other, almost completely ignoring Brian. However, Juliana stays distant but keeps a close eye on him the entire night. Juliana watches with a tear rolling down her cheek. When David realizes Juliana is there, he asks Sophia to pretend to engage in a deep conversation with him so that Juliana won't come near him. David and Sophia disappear into his private office where they talk for a while. David and Sophia end up hitting it off. David walks Sophia back to her place, where they stay up, sketch each other, they spend the entire evening talking but don't sleep together. The next morning as David is getting ready to drive to work, Juliana drives up beside him and asks how his night with Sophia was. Unaware of David, Juliana has followed him there. As David is about to leave, Juliana makes David feel guilty about ignoring her and convinces him to get into her car, and soon reveals her jealousy of Sophia. It quickly becomes obvious that she is obsessed with David. She starts driving recklessly, speeding through busy city streets, all the while insisting that she's deeply in love with him and berating him for treating her so casually. She reminds David that they sleep four times the other night, and he has been inside her. That she swallowed his load and that means something. She tells David that, when you sleep with someone, your body makes a promise whether you do or not. Fearing for their safety, he tries to get her to stop the car by telling her that he loves her. She purposely crashes the car, killing herself and drastically disfiguring David's face. David suffers from blinding headaches due to the metal pieces holding his skull together. David meets with his doctors and they tell him that there is no further help that plastic surgery can do for him. They offer David a prosthetic mask and this angers him. David wears a prosthetic mask around others, but the mental and physical scarring from the accident causes him to become withdrawn and depressed. After this, David emerges out of his silos. He begins taking board meetings over video calls. He goes to Sophia's dance class to meet her. She meets him and is visually disturbed by his disfigured face. They plan to meet again but Sophia is hesitant to be around him, and when they go on a date she brings Brian along. The date is a disaster as David drinks too much and makes Sophia increasingly uneasy around him. David insults the two and they leave him to wallow in the street outside the club. At this point, we have a tangent. The film splits into reality and the lucid dream. The next morning, Sophia returns to David, asleep on the street, and apologizes to him. She takes him home, and over time, helps David emotionally recover. From that moment on, David's life is turned around. 
His team of plastic surgeons can restore his face and he finds his soulmate in Sofia. David's newfound happiness is short-lived when he begins hallucinating. He notices strange oddities, such as brief visions of his distorted face, and a man at a bar who tells David that he could control the world and everyone in it. One night he goes to bed with Sophia and wakes up to find himself with Juliana, who insists she is Sophia. He grows violent out of confusion and shock. He is convinced that Juliana is alive and playing games with him. He is arrested and told by Tip that he severely beat Sophia, but Tip will have the case thrown out. Tip shows David photos of Juliana with a bruised face, but everybody, including his best friend Brian, tells him that it was Sophia he attacked. David breaks into Sophia's apartment and finds that every photo he'd seen of Sophia is now of Juliana. Juliana attacks him thinking he's an intruder but then apologizes while still insisting she is Sophia. She leaves the room and the actual Sophia returns in her place as if nothing unusual had happened. They begin to make love but while they are in the middle of the act he finds that he is making love to Juliana. In a fit of panic, he suffocates her and then discovers he has just killed Sophia. When David is finished telling Dr. McCabe his story he still can't bring himself to believe that he killed anybody. Dr. McCabe, frustrated by David's failure to tell him anything meaningful that might help his case, tells him that he can no longer help David and will try to argue for temporary derangement. This odd turn of legalistic phrase is just one of many clues that in this version of David's world all is not what it seems. As Dr. McCabe leaves, David sees an advertisement for a cryonics company called Life Extension. This advertisement involving a dog that has been frozen and brought back to life has appeared at several points throughout the film. David is entranced by the commercial, and McCabe sees that there may be a connection between Life Extension and David's amnesia. Dr. McCabe conducts several more interviews, which serve to help David to recall the name Life Extension. Seeing a company with that name nearby, McCabe arranges to take David there escorted by a guard. Rebecca, a company representative, explains how Life Extension uses cryonic suspension to save those with terminal illnesses until a cure can be found, keeping them in a lucid dream state to otherwise exercise their mind. David realizes that he had signed on as a client. He had opted for an extra feature called the lucid dream. This allows cryogenically frozen, clinically dead clients to experience an unending custom-made dream life with no memory of their physical death. David realizes that he is in his lucid dream, which has become a nightmare. He escapes McCabe and the guards while calling for technical support, and rushes for the building's lobby, which is suddenly empty. An elevator opens, revealing the strange man from the bar, who invites him in. As the elevator climbs to the top of an impossibly tall building, the support technician explains that David has been in suspension for 150 years. The lucid dream was spliced into his memories at the point where he passed out on the sidewalk after his night out with Sophia and Brian. Since nothing, he experienced after the splice was real David realizes that he never murdered anybody. They emerge on the rooftop, high above the clouds. David imagines McCabe to be back and he appears from a door. Dr. McCabe tells him that the guilt he felt for the way he treated Juliana may have caused his subconscious to merge Juliana and Sophia. But it turns out that Dr. McCabe isn't real either, he's just a character David created in his dream to be the father figure he always wanted. The technical support tells David that in reality, he never saw Sophia again and that Thomas Tip, the attorney that David considered firing in the beginning, had saved the company for David and helped him regain control from the board of directors. But David, suffering constant pain and depression following his disfigurement, committed suicide. In the end, technical support reveals an upgrade to the software which allows David to either be reinserted into the lucid dream with no memory of the nightmare portion or to be awakened in the present time which is 150 years after he was frozen and live in the real world with a restored body. To wake up in the real world, David would need to jump off the tall building. This has been chosen by him to overcome his fear of heights. He has chosen this scenario to ensure it is not easy to decide to wake up. David chooses to be awakened in this future present realizing that everyone he ever knew will be long dead and his wealth will be worth far less. Edmund asks if he has any last wishes. David asks to meet with Sophia. Sophia appears and David pledges his love for her one last time. David asks Sophia if she remembers what she told him before. That every passing minute is another chance to turn it all around. Sophia said I'll find you again. David responded I'll see you in another life when we are both cats. After one last lucid dream exchange with Sophia, he leaps off the skyscraper. 
multiple memory images cascade frenetically through his mind as he falls. The final shot is of a brief whiteout accompanied by the sound of a woman's voice telling him to open your eyes and an extreme close-up of a single human eye opening and staring into the camera. Explaining the ending of Vanilla Sky The ending of Vanilla Sky is straightforward. Everything that tech support says is true. David is having a lucid dream. He did kill himself. He didn't kill Sophia. He does have a choice of waking up or continuing the dream. David decides to wake up 150 some years in the future. After the drunken night, David wakes up alone on the street. He never meets Sophia after that. David battles the board with the help of Tommy and gains back control. After that, David shuts himself away for months. Edmund, from Life Extension, finds David on the internet and connects with him. David opts for the lucid dream and decides to end his life. Life Extension cryogenically freezes David's body. As instructed by David, the company erases the memories of his death and events that occur post the drunken night on the street. They replace it with an alternate version and David begins dreaming. Brian throws a three-day memorial in David's old home. Sophia attends the memorial and is unable to forget that first night with David. In this version, David decides that he gets back together with Sophia. As instructed by him, the company splices his life events with an alternate reality. A reality where Sophia appears in the morning picks him up and takes him home. They begin their relationship. Life Extension is monitoring the lucid dream and they have realized that David's subconscious is turning the dream into a nightmare. They send tech support a digital version of Edmund to go meet David. Edmund tells David to calm down and take back control. He tells David that the people in the bar are mere projections and when David says what I'd love for them to do is shut up, they do, and everyone goes quiet. He's confused and leaves. When he sees the ad for Life Extension on TV, it triggers his memory and he requests to be taken to the company's headquarters where he learns the truth he has been sleeping for 150 years, living a lucid dream while Brian, Sophia are all dead in the real world. He is given the choice to either return to his lucid dream, which has now been fixed or returns to the real world where advanced technology can not only wake him up but fix his face. He chooses the latter and bids farewell to his dream characters, promising Sophia that he will meet her in the next life. He jumps from the building to break his lucid dream and wakes up in the real world, where someone, probably a life extension employee asks him to open his eyes. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.